my task here is to speak to social activism. And I have a subtopic uh, caption, exercising the people's power. Because ultimately, social activism is all about the expression of the people's power. I will start with a very powerful statement that many Ghanaians are either oblivious of or do not even care to know. And that's the, the opening statement of our constitution, the 1992 constitution, that says that the sovereignty of Ghana resides in the people of Ghana, in whose name and for whose welfare the powers of government are to be exercised in the manner and within the limits laid down in the constitution. Now, this is the fundamental of our democracy in Ghana. Our democracy is not about party politics. It's about the people's power. And we are at a point where Ghanaians are not awakened to this truth in our constitution. So every four years, we vote, and we are content with the fact that we are given opportunity to vote and employ some people to do the thinking and the working for us while we relax apathetically for things to happen. And my duty here is to actually awaken our, con our consciousness to this uh, challenge we have in our democracy. What is social activism? I will save myself the, the temptation of trying to put a jacket definition on uh, the concept called social activism because it is, a, it, is, it is one branch of a very big thing that you cannot define in isolation. So you more or less a safe defining activism, which has to do with a conscious effort to impede or guide a change in society or organization. Then the social one attached to it becomes a focused action to effect a change in a particular area of society. And when you're talking about social life, you're talking about education, you're talking about health, you're talking about um, job and employment because economics, social, politics are all intertwined. So once you become a social activist, you are invariably also a political activist and economic activist. You can become a cultural activist because when the environment is being damaged by reckless politicians and technocrats, it has adverse effects on all other areas of our lives. So it's, it's something, in a, it's an inescapable consciousness that once you step into it, you are, you are dragged in all directions because ultimately, the good of society and the good of man are your goals. Now, I will cite some few examples of some bold steps people have taken over the years. And I, you must understand that when you're talking of Ghana today, the 1957-born Ghana, it was born out of social upheavals. It, so it is, it's, our, it's in our DNA. So it's, an, it's, a, it's kind of an indictment on us to get to a point in a generation where people are indifferent about the politics of our, of our country, the social uh, dilemmas of our society. It is, it's, a, it's an indictment on us. It tells you how we have failed to ensure a continuity of awareness of ourselves. Because our, our country was born out of an awakening awareness of a generation about how we're not being engineered consciously to lift ourselves from poverty and from oppression. In 2013, there was this activist in Kenya called Boniface Mwangi. He came up with a brilliant idea, very novel idea. And what he did was, he, he had the other activists bring together pigs. And they assembled them close to the center of power in Kenya. And MPs' names were written on the pigs. And it was, it was a protest against corruption, which had become endemic in Kenyan politics. I am particularly inspired by that because it tells you that that society woke up at a point to challenge the power that existed. That no, this, this, this not, you can't just do anything at all with the power we've given you. Because we gave you that power. And it's for Focus achievement that we elect people. It is not for politicians to be well up than us. 
Then, in Brazil, 2004, there was this chef, David Hens. He used to work with a very wealthy uh, hotel in uptown Brazil society. One day, he got disturbed in his spirit and stepped out to the slums, they're called the favelas of Brazil. Here we call the shanty towns and the slums. And right after that visit, he resigned from his work and moved into the favelas, where he volunteered himself to start teaching young people cooking. Because he saw in himself an example of being able to uplift yourself from poverty by the skill of cooking. And within a short time, he could train about 3,500 people who could get jobs in areas or in the sector he was in. Now that's one person who stepped up as an activist, not targeting the powers there be, but trying to go down straight to the problem to do it himself. That's another thing. So I'm trying to introduce to you the different phases of activism so you don't become a fanatic chasing one thing. Because then it's a resort you are looking for. It is possible to render the powers useless by, by circumventing them and solving the problems or removing the powers themselves. Then in UK, in 2015, um, when uh, the movement for living wage became popular in the Western Hemisphere, most big corporations had embraced the idea that Mark and Spencer was being stubborn. And living wage is about paying a minimum that could give a person a dignified living standard and it is paid hourly instead of the minimum wage. So the, mini the living wage is measured by how much the person you are giving the money to can actually live off that money within a period of time. What one artist did was to mobilize a number of people who were interested. Then they stitched messages in handkerchiefs. And when Mark and Spencer were going to have a board meeting, they sneaked it into the board to the board members. So if you knew any board member of Mark and Spencer in your in your county or in your area, you gave him the, the handkerchief. Now that was a very powerful silent movement because the, the chairman was adamant. He, she, he didn't want to do anything about it. So to, to take the chair out of his, his, <coughs> his feet was to now mean the people who was going to take the decision with to the side of the people. And it, 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 it was successful. So activism can be done in the state contest and in business contest. And that's, that's my point here. This year, Hong Kong, which is semi-autonomous region in, uh, on the Chinese peninsula, uh, introduced what we call the uh, repatriation bill. It means that criminal, some certain criminals could be taken to China mainland to be trialed. And the whole nation stood up against that as an act of imperial, imperialism, Chinese imperialism in Hong Kong. And so far, in this century, it's one of the most powerful people's expression of power in, 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 in modern history. And it's something that we should take inspiration from. So, social activism, from what I've said so far, is not rocket science. It's about waking up and saying that, no, I can't allow this to happen. And it shouldn't be something that should bring you immediate benefits. And for the Christians, when Moses killed the Egyptian who was molesting the, 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 the Hebrew child, he was being an activist. He was being an activist. He was standing for social justice. And Sitting down, not doing anything about what is happening in this country, for me, is an act of sin. You can commit against your own conscience 
and your own self, your, your society. Activism in general, social activism in particular, has to do with one thing, power. The transaction of power. It's about, it's like having given your car to a friend to use, but yet making sure that he doesn't destroy your car. So you put in place checks so that you get your car back in one piece. We cannot continue to give politicians power and relax. It has never worked in any human society where some few people are given power and the rest will sit back expecting their expectations to be met. Ensuring effective management of power within a republic, geographical space, or a, a community for desired purpose constitutes the work of the activist. We are talking about civic, civic power, that is the capacity to ensure in public, whether in election or government, or in social and economic awareness, that the right priorities are worked at. You ask yourself, why do we need social activists? Or social, is social activism even necessary in Ghana? Yes. It will forever in our human history be necessary. And at a point, people became, become very conscious of what should be done. And when it is not done, they should stand up and speak out. Recently, um, the government went into a security deal with the United States American America uh, military. Quite an irresponsible and reckless decision on the part of our leadership to give the foreign military free hand to operate in our jurisdiction. No reason, nothing justifies such decision. Some of us they didn't sit in our rooms to complain and mama. We stepped out there and protested at the parliament, where members of parliament or lawmakers we are voting for were meeting to sell our country wholesale to a foreign power. And it's for one reason. The world is changing. And uh, the war, the war mongers in human history are looking for landing spaces among other, among other geographies. And America needs a place where they can launch from in times of danger. But let me, let me, let me, let me just, uh, what do you call, divert and expose you to some, something. In the later part of la the last century, the 20th century, America invariably was only nuclear power then. In our century, there are quite a number of nuclear powers. Germany is a nuclear power. France is a nuclear power. UK is a nuclear power. Um, India is a nuclear power. And, Iran is, and the most dangerous of them all to the West is the Chinese. They now have firepower that could reach the continent, the continent of America. Now, that is their greatest fear. Meanwhile, the only people that the world should fear are Americans. They have fought most of the wars in human history. And I'm not saying in modern history, in human history. And most of the wars were senseless. They were just hegemonic wars. China has been on the, on the defensive posture for many years. They now have firepower now. Now what America is doing now is now decentralizing its firepower. It means that if an enemy state hates America with all his arsenals, its arsenals in America, it will lose out in the war. So what they are trying to do now is decentralize its uh, what do you call it, catches so that you can hit America and they can launch from Africa. You can hit America and they can, they can launch from the Middle East. And that's a, a very reckless and irresponsible strategy that is going to embroider the whole world into their mess, if care is not taken. And it, people have become so coward in our world space that they can't speak. Oh, they will kill you. America will kill you. Come on. 
If you're a Christian and you, you are scared of being killed, then I don't see your sense. What the Bible says, do not fear those who can kill the body and cannot kill the spirit. So if we're actually going to practice our important religion very well, become more radical and very honest people. Now when the apartheid regime was packing out of South Africa, what they did was to dismantle all the nuclear establishment infrastructure they had built. Because they didn't want the black, black people to have power, have access to nuclear power. And that was an implementation of a very old racist policy. When the nations successfully defeated the most powerful firepower in those days, during the Asian, Haitian Revolution, the French, it really hurt the French government, especially Napoleon, the great, so-called. So he, he, he was bent on further destroying the Haitian economy from all angles. And he said it clearly. And the reason he was doing that was to ensure that no black people take inspiration from such bold step. The history was replayed when Nkoma was taken off the scene. It was replayed when Mugabe was attacked and created a, mon a monster out of him. Because the land politics in South Africa is very, very sensitive. If all the black countries in South Southern Africa are to rise up and take the land back, it will be revolutionary. So you see, we are at a point that we cannot continue to be to live in fear for our personal safety at the risk of our collective interest. And if you look around Africa right now, poor government has become the order of the day. Systemic corruption, unemployment, security breakdown, food insufficiency and insecurity, rising poverty and illiteracy, deteriorating education, poor health care system, violation of the environment. These are the reasons why we cannot be quiet. We all must become activists, one way or the other. You can start from our homes, you can start from our schools. If you're a teacher, you have the best opportunity to be an activist. If in your workplace, if people are stealing, decide not to steal, you're an activist. You're resisting a system. Thank you very much.